Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. On this video I'm going to talk about System Verilog for hardware synthesis. In other words, how to use the System Verilog language to design digital hardware using RTL synthesis tools. I'm going to assume that you already have some basic knowledge of either Verilog or VHDL, so this video isn't really aimed at total beginners. But I will recap some of the basic principles of RTL synthesis as we go. At the end of the video, I'll tell you where you can get further information. Before diving into the main topic, let's start by summarising the main features of System Verilog and see where the features for hardware synthesis fit into the bigger picture. System Verilog offers three distinct capabilities, sometimes referred to as System Verilog RTL, System Verilog Assertions and System Verilog Test Bench. System Verilog RTL, of course, is for hardware design, and you can think of it as a series of improvements to Verilog, which include programming language features from C, interfaces, and the synthesis-friendly RTL constructs that we're going to talk about here. System Verilog assertions are for writing checkers, and System Verilog test bench is for creating constrained random verification environments, which is perhaps the most significant application of System Verilog today, but isn't the focus of this particular video. If you want further details, I suggest you check out some of my other videos, such as VHDL vs System Verilog, or System Verilog as the new Verilog. So let's start our tour of System Verilog for hardware synthesis by looking at modules. Modules are the basic building blocks of the structural part of the System Verilog language, just as they are in Verilog. In System Verilog, you can simply list all the inputs and outputs to a particular block on the first line of the module, and by default, each input and output represents a single wire. This feature is known as an ANSI-style port list, and was first introduced in Verilog, though it's been enhanced in System Verilog, and it makes the System Verilog module syntax very concise. So there we are, that's all there is to it. Inputs and outputs on the first line, and then a set of continuous assignments to calculate new values for the outputs whenever any of the inputs change. By the way, throughout this video, all the System Verilog language keywords are highlighted in red. You've always been able to create parameterized modules in Verilog and VHDL. In System Verilog, the syntax has been tidied up so that it's more consistent than it was in Verilog and more concise than it is in VHDL. Parameters are defined on the first line of the module before the ports using the syntax you can see here. In this particular case, we've got a module with two integer parameters n and m, where n defaults to 1 and m defaults to n. Overriding parameter values is always optional, and if a parameter is not overridden, then it takes the default value from its declaration. There's one quirk in the syntax of the ANSI style port list, which you can see here. The first port A is a single wire, but the second port B is a vector of width n. Whenever you introduce a range into a list of names in a declaration, that range applies to every name that follows the range in the list. That's why we've written input C and output H in this example, to avoid C and H being vectors too. So, now for module instantiation. In other words, creating an instance of one module inside another module, where for the purposes of this video on hardware synthesis, both modules represent blocks of hardware. As an example, we instantiate the parameterized module from a second module named top. On the module instance line, you first override any parameters and then connect the ports. Compared to plain old Verilog, the syntax has been cleaned up so that you can use either name or position to identify the parameters, just as you can when you connect the ports. Some people call this explicit versus implicit connection. In this example, we've overridden both parameters, m and n, to have the value 4. Another thing that's different to Verilog is that the things connected to the ports have been declared to be of type logic. In most contexts, logic means the same as reg in Verilog. In other words, logic usually means a four-state variable that can have the values 0, 1, z or x. But compared to Verilog, where a reg is definitely a kind of variable, 
In system Verilog, logic is a data type and so can be used in other contexts such as defining new data types. In the previous examples, all the inputs and outputs have been wires, just as they would have been in Verilog, or roughly equivalent to signals in VHDL. But in System Verilog, the difference between wires and variables is much less important than it was in Verilog, because some of the most troublesome and annoying rules of Verilog concerning when to use wires and when to use variables have been relaxed. Inserting the word logic into an input or output declaration makes it a variable rather than a wire. Without the word logic, input A and output F would have been wires, which would have worked perfectly well. With the word logic, input A and output F become variables. And the point is that that's now acceptable too, because in System Verilog you are allowed to make a continuous assignment to a variable. So that's the first rule to be relaxed. Continuous assignments to variables are permitted. The second relaxation is that variables can be connected to output ports, and you can see an example of that on the second line from the bottom, where variable f is connected to the output of module inv. With these new rules, we can do without wires altogether for most purposes. The only case where you still need wires is where you want to take advantage of Verilog's bus resolution, drive strengths or inertial delays, which isn't usually the case at register transfer level. So the new rule is that a variable can be assigned using a procedural assignment, which was always the case, but can now instead be assigned by one continuous assignment or being connect by being connected to one output port. That makes things much simpler. Now some shorthand notation you can use when connecting ports. When you connect ports, you often find that you're connecting a port to a variable or wire with the same name as the port, so you end up having to type the name twice, as you can see for the instance labelled inst1. System Verilog gives you a shorthand for connecting ports to variables of the same name, which you can see for inst2. There's even a shorthand dot star for connecting every port to a variable with the same name as the port. This dot star seems to divide people into those who think it's a really neat trick and those who think it's kind of dangerous. In practice it doesn't seem quite as dangerous as you might think and using dot star can save you some time. If you do decide to use dot star then it's possible to include exceptions where some of the ports get connected to different names. You do that by simply including explicit connections in the list alongside dot star. It doesn't matter whether the explicit connections go at the start or at the end of the list. So in this example, the port CK is connected to the variable or wire clock, while D is connected to D and Q to Q. So, having looked at modules and port connections, at structural system Verilog in other words, let's now look at RTL coding style in system Verilog. In principle, RTL code in System Verilog is much like Verilog or VHDL, but System Verilog has some really nice synthesis-friendly constructs. Any register transfer level description identifies the registers in a block of hardware, along with the combinational transfer function between those registers. The registers could be identified explicitly, although in many popular RTL coding styles, the registers get inferred from procedural code by the synthesis tool. In any particular block, there may be some purely combinational signal paths from input to output. Or paths might pass through one register, or pass through two registers, or any, or any number of registers between input and output. In any case, understanding the structure of the hardware block you're designing in terms of registers and combinational logic is absolutely key to using RTL synthesis. There are three ways to describe combinational logic in System Verilog, just as there are in Verilog or VHDL. It can be described using module instantiation, always assuming the modules you instantiate are themselves combinational, of course. It can be described using continuous assignments, remembering, as we said earlier, that the left-hand side of a continuous assignment can be a variable instead of a wire in System Verilog. Continuous assignments are implicitly combinational because the entire left-hand side of the assignment gets re-evaluated whenever there's any change to a value on the right-hand side. Finally, combinational logic can be described using always blocks, provided that you obey the three golden rules that we use to teach proper RTL coding style. 
In case you're new to this, the three golden rules are complete sensitivity, complete assignment, and no feedback. Complete sensitivity means that the event control or sensitivity list at the top of the always block must include every single variable or wire that's read by the block, which you can achieve in modern Verilog using the construct always at star. Complete assignment means that every single variable that's assigned within the always block must be assigned in every possible execution path through the always block, otherwise you'd be inferring transport la transparent latches. And finally, no feedback means no feedback. Now let's add the registers. Individual registers get inferred by the synthesis tool whenever you make an assignment within a clocked always block and the variable being assigned is either read outside the always block or read by the same always block in a later clock cycle. There are good and bad ways to infer registers, and here we can see the coding style that's pretty much universally recognised as being the best practice. The variables that represent registers are assigned using non-blocking assignments, and the always block is made sensitive to the clock on the first line of the always, along with any asynchronous control signals. In fact, as many of you will know, it's really important to stick very closely to the coding style shown here so the synthesis tool can recognise what you want. For example, if you include a reset in the event control, then you must test the level of the reset using an if statement, as you can see here. If the logic on the right-hand side of the assignment is trivial, the code shown here could synthesise to nothing but a bank of registers but otherwise it will synthesize to a block of combinational logic with registers on the outputs, which is in effect the basic building block for synthesized circuits, with logic alone and registers alone dropping out of special cases. So, over the previous few slides we've reviewed some of the basic principles of RTL design. Now let's get back to System Verilog and those synthesis-friendly constructs. System Verilog gives you three special forms of always block dedicated to synthesizing combinational logic, transparent latches, and flip-flops. Always comb is for combinational logic. It's like always at star, except that always comb is also sensitive to any variables read indirectly by functions called from the always block, which guarantees that the always comb really does have a complete sensitivity list. Synthesis tools might be expected to check that the logic really is combinational. In other words, to check for complete assignment as well as complete sensitivity. Now always latch. It turns out always latch has exactly the same rules as always comb, but the intent is different. The difference is that always latch is intended to synthesize transparent latches using an incomplete assignment. Transparent latches are not so widely used these days, so that's all I'll say about it. Finally, always FF, which is intended for clocked always blocks. An always FF must have exactly one event control, which must appear immediately after the always keyword. Synthesis tools might be expected to check that the coding rules for synthesizing clocked logic had been followed. All three of these special forms of always share a common rule, that a variable must not be assigned by more than one process, ensuring that you don't get the outputs of regular active logic gates wired, wired together. As well as the new forms of always block, System Verilog has two new keywords, priority and unique, to direct the synthesis of if and case statements. You could equally well use these new keywords in combinational or clocked always blocks, but we'll illustrate the principles using an always comb. Priority and unique have been introduced to help avoid several very common synthesis pitfalls around the use of conditional if and case statements. In particular, unwanted transparent latches due to incomplete assignments, and removing logic to decode conditions that can't actually occur in the hardware without also introducing fatal differences between simulation and synthesis. So, we'll start with priority. The keyword priority indicates explicitly to anyone reading the code that the conditions in the if statement are evaluated in sequence from top to bottom, such that if A equals B, then F is set to 1, and the remaining conditions don't even get tested. 
Of course, the if statement had precisely this behaviour anyway. The point of priority is to make this explicit, with the expectation that the synthesis tool will need to generate logic to implement the correct priorities. The one change that priority does make to the semantics of the if statement is that at least one condition should match. In other words, priority implies that the input conditions are completely decoded. You get a runtime warning from the simulator if none of the conditions are true and there's no final else part to the if statement. In other words, a priority if is expected to have at least one condition that's true or an else part that executes otherwise. The priority keyword can also appear in front of a case statement, with exactly the same rules as a priority if. In this case, A, B, C and D are all variables. Well, wires actually, but as we saw earlier, this now makes little difference in system Verilog. So in a Verilog case statement, the expression at the top is compared with each of the statement labels one by one until a match is found. And the labels can also be variable expressions. Again, the system Verilog priority keyword doesn't change the meaning of the case statement except to produce a runtime warning if the expression is unmatched. But it does create a clear expectation that we're synthesizing priority logic. So, just to be clear, the value of A should equal the value of B, C, D, or possibly more than one of these. If it doesn't, you get a warning from simulation, and all bets are off as to what will be synthesized. If there is a match, you get priority decoding logic synthesized. The alternative to priority is unique. Like priority, unique enforces complete assignment, but this time it goes further. Unique requires that the branches of the if statement are mutually exclusive as well as mutually exhaustive. In other words, it means that in this example the synthesis tool can assume that only one bit of the state vector will be hot, because if more than one bit were hot it would have been picked up with a warning during simulation. Or to put it another way, it means the conditions of a unique if can always be decoded in parallel, so the synthesis tool can minimise the logic because it doesn't have to generate priority logic to arbitrate between conflicting conditions. With unique if there can be no conflicting conditions. And finally, unique case. Again, the keyword unique allows the synthesis tool to assume that exactly one bit of the 4-bit state vector is hot, and so to minimise the logic. Each time the case statement is executed, simulation will generate a warning unless exactly one branch of the case statement matches. The final synthesis-friendly feature we'll mention is the wild equality operator. Wild equality allows the kind of pattern matching you can do with a Verilog case Z to be done using an if statement instead. In other words, you can ignore certain bits in a vector when decoding its value by comparing the bits with x, as you can see here. This isn't a big deal, but it does make the language a little more consistent, because if statements and case statements can now be used interchangeably in most contexts. The wild equality operator is much cleaner than the case x, because it's only an x on the right-hand side that counts as a wild card. An x on the left-hand side represents itself. You can see in this example that always comb and unique are used to state explicitly that we're describing combinational logic using an if statement in which one and only one condition matches each time round. So, we're coming to the end of this video on System Verilog for hardware synthesis. We've just been focusing on the synthesis-friendly RTL features, but there's much more to System Verilog than that. There's the C-style programming language features of System Verilog, meaning the data types and control constructs, many of which are synthesizable. There's also packages, which are comparable to packages in VHDL and to Java. There's System Verilog interfaces, which are important for making the connection between a System Verilog module and a class-based verification environment. In theory, interfaces should be useful for synthesis, though synthesis tool support for interfaces is still somewhat limited. You can find out more about these features of System Verilog for hardware synthesis on the Doulos website at the URL you can see here. You can also find information on System Verilog assertions and using System Verilog Testbench for verification. 
At Doulos, we deliver training classes throughout the USA, Europe and Asia across a range of topics including hardware design and verification, FPGA technology, embedded software, ARM processor technology, System C and DSL, and of course, System Verilog. Do visit us at doulos.com for more details.